want to welcome every one of us into the presence of the Lord today. Welcome to Better Experience. Welcome to a new season. Welcome to your season of newness. Welcome to that season of greatness. Welcome to that season of excellence. I welcome as many that are watching us online, joining us virtually from wherever you are joining us. Remember, wherever you are becomes better. The presence of the Lord is with you, and it's my prayer today that each and every one of us, we're going to have a definite, I repeat, a definite encounter with the Lord today in the name of Jesus. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60, and that's our focus for this month. Arise, shine. We talked about it last week and we're still going to continue today. Arise, shine, part two. Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1. The scripture says, arise, shine. For thy light is what? Are we together, church? Whose light is come? The pastor's light only? Your light. Who are you? You would specify with your name. I still remember a teacher told us this morning during Sunday school. You want to personalize it. Who is going to arise today? The scripture is saying, arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 2 says, though darkness covers the earth, and gross darkness, the people. He said, but the Lord shall arise. Upon who? Upon who? And his glory shall be seen upon thee. His glory will be seen upon you in the name of Jesus. Look at verse 3. When the light is upon you, and his glory is seen upon you. What will happen in verse 3? He said, and the Gentiles and others who have abandoned you, who have neglected you, who have abused you, who have what? Despised you. They will come to whose light? To your light. And kings. You see, the people that will come to your light are not just ordinary people. Riffraffs. They are not just People of no influence. And kings will do what? Will come to the brightness of the rising. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Arise, shine, part two. Now, last week we laid a lot of foundations. We talked about the fact that arise, shine is a commandment. Is a call to action. And when that cause goes out from the Lord, there is always something that follows. Arise, be healed. Arise, possess your possession. Arise, be delivered. Arise. And do what? And begin to make progress. A call to action. And we also talk about the fact that everyone who has received this commandment must do what? Must arise. The call is to everyone. It's not only to some specific group of people. It's not only to those who are physically present in church. Hallelujah. As we all know, that has not been possible in the last what? In the last couple of months. And so that commandment is to each and every one of us. That commandment is also to those who are sleeping. Amen. Arise, O sleeper. We know the story of Jonah. And that's the word of the Lord to someone. If you are sleeping spiritually, it's time to arise. Tell your neighbor, it's time to arise. It's time to arise. Who can arise? We say the sick. Those who are dead. Can what? Can arise because God will give them life. Who can arise? The oppressed, the afflicted, the abused. We look at the story of that man at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. 
He has been abandoned, ignored, neglected here. But when Jesus showed up, his story changed. We're going to continue today. And I want us to look at why must you arise? Why? I'm very sure most of us are used to that three-letter word, why, especially for a parent. Praise God. Because for every instruction that you are giving your children, the three-letter word is what you will hear, but why? Praise God. Why must I arise? Why do I need to arise? Why do I need to get up? Why do I need to act into that commandment? Let's go back to that Isaiah 60. It says, arise. Let's, uh, let's now read it in Amplify. Shine. Arise. From which states? It says from your spiritual depression. Your spiritual state of sleeping. Your spiritual state of oblivion arrives to a new life. Shine. What does that mean? He said, be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the Lord. Now look at what happened. He said, for your light has come. Tell your neighbor again, your light has come. For your light has come. For your light has come. Light. Let's contrast light and darkness. Let's do a, you know, a comparison. But I can tell you there's no comparison. So we're going to do a contrast. The art as we know it is full of darkness. Look at verse uh, 3. Amen. Oh, no, verse 2. In looking at why light is important, you need to understand from the perspective of someone who is in the dark. Darkness shall cover the earth. It says deep darkness is what is now covering the people. Praise God. You remember also in Genesis chapter 1, when God created the heaven and the earth, Verse 2 says, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness represents what? Oppression. Darkness represents evil. Darkness represents what is not perfect, what is not good. Praise God. In the book of uh, Psalm 74, verse 20, Psalm 74, verse 20, the psalmist was reminding God here, he says, have respect to the covenant that you made. He said, why? Because for the dark places of the land, the dark places of the earth are full of habitation of cruelty, habitation of violence. Do we see the, the, the reason now that darkness is not good? Why? He said, because... If God did not have respect to that covenant, that it will be our light. This earth is full of the habitation of cruelty. The dark places of the earth, there are evils. Evil men and women and evil powers all around. That Isaiah 62 says, though darkness can cover the earth, but now look at what the enemy is doing. He's not making thick, gross darkness to cover the people. It's not about the earth. It is the people. Because when the people see the light, that is when their heart will turn to the Lord. Arise, for thy light has come. While light now represents what is good. Light represents what is perfect. Light represents the best. The excellent God. No wonder God said, when he saw the darkness pervading, he says, let there be light. Genesis 1-3. And there was what? And there was light. 
Why do you think God had to introduce light? Because, beloved, darkness is not meant for us as children of God. Have you not heard people using such phrases that they were in a dark place? What does that mean? That means they've passed through terrible, untold hardship that they cannot disclose dark places of the earth, a full of the habitation of cruelty. It is the enemy that oppresses in the dark. It is the enemy that abused. It is the enemy that suppresses in the dark. But the Bible said, though darkness covers the earth, the enemy is using gross darkness to cover the people. That's why God created light. And that's why light is important. You see, when God created light in the beginning, the Bible says he separated, he put a separation between darkness and what? And light. Why do you think God had to put a demarcation, a line of demarcation between darkness and light? Because he did not want us as his own children to dwell in the dark. Praise God. I mean, physically, if this place is dark, we will not be able to see each other's face. Correct? We will not be able to what? See each other's face. And if there is something that the enemy is very good at, is to manipulate, is to cause people to be afraid where there is no need to be afraid. And that's why. I'm emphasizing to someone in the house today that the light of God has come upon you. Amen. So the light of God has come upon you. Amen. Arise! Shine. Whose light has come? Amen. Whose light has come? Every one of us. But that light, is it from you? It is from the Lord. And that's why you don't have to be afraid of the dark again. Praise the Lord. You don't have to what? Be afraid of the... Why? Because God is all light. While the devil is all what? Darkness. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 5. 1 John chapter 1 verse 5. The Bible talks about our God being all night. All light. This then is the message which we have had and declared, out of him, and that is what I am declaring to you, church, that God is what? His light. In him, there is no what? And so, if there are darkness pervading around your life, pervading around your home, around your career or business or the life of your children, they are not from God. Because in him, there is no darkness at all. In our God. Only Jesus also can give light. Praise the Lord. And so, let's go back to the why. Amen. Why must I shine? Why must you shine? Why the need to shine? Number one. And we've read it. Because your light has come. Amen. Your light as what? Arise. Shine. For thy light has come. When you receive something, when something has been given to you, you need to use it. Praise God. Something that you don't use, that is not useful for you, Something that you have that you are not taking advantage of. After some time, what do you think will happen? Amen. If it's, let's say, uh, a cloth or a shoe, you will grow them, right? Praise God. Or they will go out of fashion. <laughs> Amen. I'm sure some of us still remember those days. We have some beautiful and, you know, wonderful dresses. No matter how much you love them, after some time. They will be out of fashion. But we are talking about our God who is all light. 
When he releases his light upon you, that light is permanent. Arise. Why must I arise? For your light has come. And so you cannot afford to remain in darkness. You cannot afford to dwell in darkness. You cannot afford to allow, to permit darkness around you. Are we together, church? I want you to tell yourself, my light has come. My light has come. Look at verse 2 of that Isaiah 60. The B part. He said, though darkness may cover the earth, gross darkness may cover the people, but the Bible says, but, let's go back to KJV. He said, but, it does not matter what is happening, verse 2. It does not matter what is happening. Darkness all around, pervading. He says, but, the Lord shall arise upon you. With what? With his light. Praise the Lord. Beloved, I want to challenge someone again. You must dwell in that light. Because you are a child of light. Don't allow your light to become dark. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Understand who you are in Christ Jesus. And one of the ways in which the enemy can corrupt the greatness, the glory, the excellence of children of God is to introduce darkness gradually. And people will see darkness as a, you know, something palatable, something tolerable. We remember in the beginning... If darkness was something that is permitted allowed, do you think God would take steps? And God saw. And what he saw, he was not happy with it. And he says, let there be light. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number two. Number two. He said, why must I arise? Because your light has come. Number two, why must I arise? Because the light that has come has now made you the light of the world. Praise the Lord. You are who? You are the light of the world. Because the light that is upon you is not only for you. It's for others to see. It's for others to be able to see. Matthew chapter 5. Let's start from verse 14. Since you are the light of the world. Amen. Who are you? The light of the world. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14. A city set, located on a hill cannot be hid. Why? Hello? If you set something on a hill, why can it not be hidden? Because it is what? It is located on a hill. Is that the reason? Praise God. Because there is light. If there is no light, it doesn't matter where anything is located. Everything will be dark. Why must I arise? Because you are the light of the world. God has set you on the pedestal on his own foundation and you cannot be hidden because it is his light that has come upon you. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 15. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. He says, men do not light a candle and put it under a bushel and hide it. They put it on a candlestick that it may do what? It may give light unto all that are in the house. You are the light of the world. Let that light shine. Verse 16. You must allow that light to shine. He said, when you now allow that light to shine, people will see your good works and God will take the glory. Why must I arise? Because you are the light of the world. Praise the Lord. If you go to the book of John chapter 9, verse 5. John chapter 9, verse 5. 
When Jesus came into this world, he was very emphatic here. He says, as long as I am in the world, I am who? I am the light. Not a light. Hello? As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But the question is this. Is Jesus still in the world again? Hello? Hello, church. Is Jesus still in the world again? Even though he has ascended to the Father, he has replicated himself in the world. And what does that tell you? That as long as you are in the world, you are also the light of the world. Hallelujah. Arise. Shine. Why must you shine? Because you are the light of the world. As long as you are in the world, God is expecting you to shine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Why must I shine? Number one, I said, your light has come. You have received that light from the Lord. Number two, that light that you have received is what now makes you to be the light of the world. We know that song, uh, I believe by Sinach. God is for me. Nothing can stand against me. He says, I'm a burning and shining light. Praise God. What are you now doing with the light? Number three. Why must I arise? Because you must share the light. Amen. Your light has what? Has come. You are the light of the world. And so you must share that light. Praise the Lord. If you go back to that, Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine. How can your light shine if you are not sharing it? You saw that analogy. It says, a man does not light a candle and put it where? Under the bushel. Well, don't tell that to the kids. You give them something. You are the one that gave them just now. And you want them to share. Mm -mm, it's mine. That's their understanding of what they were given. But God is saying, I don't want you to behave like kids. I have given you light. Let that light shine. How? By sharing it. When you share it, others will now see your good works and they will give glory to your Father in heaven. You must share that light. John chapter 8, verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus, he said something very important, and I want us to pay attention. He says, I am the light of the world. He that follow me shall not do what? Why? He says, but they shall have the light of life. Why will those who are following him, why will they not walk in darkness? Because the light that he has, he has already what? Shared it with them. And so they have that light of life in them. You remember, he says, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Are you a light? And are you sharing that light? Praise God. I said, are you sharing that light? Isaiah chapter 58, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 10. When you don't share, you are not shining. Praise God. You are not what? You are not shining. It says, if you draw out your soul to the hungry... That means you help the less privileged, the homeless. This was when he was talking about, you know, the need for fasting. And when you fasted, you know, what are the things that you need to do? 
When you draw out your soul to the hungry, you satisfy the afflicted soul. He said, then, what will happen to your light? It will rise in obscurity. It will rise from the dark. Darkness will not be able to cover your light. And even what appears to be as darkness, say, thy darkness shall be as noonday. People will still be able to see the difference that this is a light. When two people are together, they will be able to see the difference in you because that light cannot be hidden. You must share it. That's why you must arise. Praise God. In the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 47. Acts chapter 13, verse 47. Jesus gave a commandment here. He said, For so had the Lord commanded us, saying, and I want you to appropriate this for yourself. I have set thee to be a light of who? Of the Gentiles, that thou should be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Who among us has the Lord set to be a light to the world? How many of us? Amen. You, whether you accept it, whether you raise your hand or not, it doesn't matter. The commandment has been released. You have been set as a light to the world. Share the light. Arise. Shine. Why must I shine? Because your light has come. Why must I shine? Because you are the light of the world. Others are looking at you. To be able to see the way. Others are looking at you. In your place of work. To know what to do. Because they know you are going to do. The right thing. Why must I shine? Because that light. Is not only for you. It's for you to share. That they may see your shining. And they will be able to follow. Let me give us one more. Why must I shine? To strengthen your fellowship, your faith in the Lord. Praise God. If you go to the book of Psalm 27, verse 1. Psalm 27, verse 1. Talking about shining. When you have a light. In in the form of, uh, let's say, not a candle now, let's say a lantern. I'm sure most of us knows what a lantern means. You have to put oil in it, right? After some time, when you put oil in it, what will happen to that light? It will shine. It will glow. Now, when the oil is gradually going down and going down and going down, what will happen to the light? To the brightness of the light. The light is still there. But will start to do what? To dim and dim and dim and dim. Until it will what? It will die. If there is no replacement of the hoy. When you shine. You are strengthening the faith of others. You are also strengthening your own faith. When you shine, you are strengthening the bond of fellowship for others. The psalmist says here, the Lord is my light. Now, remember we said it earlier. Who is our light? Who? So, it is not your light. And so, you don't have to be afraid that this light is going to die. Mm -mm. I, I just gave us an analogy now. The light that we are talking about, it's not a candle that you, you have to hold forever or a lantern. No. The Lord is saying, I am your light, period. Wherever you go, I will continue to shine on you. Arise, shine. For your light has what? Has come. His glory is already upon you. That glory is a byproduct of the light that is already upon you. Praise God. You see, when you shine, that, that's another message for another day. But when you shine, 
that light will continue to burn. And you don't have to be afraid that you are going to run out of oil. Because his light has come upon you. And that light is to strengthen others. To strengthen their faith. Even your own faith. You see, when you are shining, the Bible says people will see your good works. And they will give glory to who? To your Father in heaven. In the book of 1 John, chapter 1, from verse 6. Let's start from verse 6. 1 John, chapter 1. Let's start from verse 6. Your faith is important, beloved, from verse 6. Your faith in the Lord is important. It must be strengthened. He says, if we say that we have fellowship with who? With who? With the Lord. With our Savior, with our Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. First John chapter 1 from verse 6. If we say we have fellowship with him, and you now do what? And walk in darkness. The scripture says you are a liar. It says we lie. And do not the truth. Because you cannot have fellowship with him and still walk in darkness. Remember I did a contrast with light and darkness. God saw darkness. And he says no, this is not good. He said let there be light. That means darkness and light cannot cohabit. And so his light is already upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. That light is from the Lord. And so, if you now have that light, it says you cannot walk in darkness anymore. Look at verse 7. You cannot do what? You cannot walk in darkness. Why? Because you have the light of God. It says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship. With him, we have fellowship with one another. If you walk in the light, as he is in the light, he's the one that has released his light upon you. And God wants you not just only to share that light, but to walk in that light. Because when you do, you are strengthening your own faith and that of others. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the book of first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. Before I round up. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. And this is a command. The Bible says, for God, who did what? Who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. In the beginning... Beloved, are we together? Remember, what happened when God created the heaven and earth? The earth was without form and void. And God says, let there be light. Where did that light come from? Out of darkness, he said, look, I don't want to see this darkness. Light, you come out. He turned the darkness into light. And so God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness... When you shine, God is saying, I am going to cause my light to shine in your heart. When that light is shining in your heart, then you, are, you will be able to give that light to others. God is shining that light in, of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But Jesus is no more here on earth and he left you and me. To do what? With the light. To do what with the light, beloved? To shine the light for others to see. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. And we're going to take a word of prayer. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. Arise, shine. Why must I shine? Because your light has come. Because God wants you to be a light. To the world. Because God wants you to share that light with others. And when you are sharing that light, you are strengthening your faith and that of others. You are strengthening the bond of fellowship. He said, For we who were sometimes darkness. 
I'm sure we are all there before. We are all sinners. And God says, you might, you may have sometimes be in darkness. He said, but when are you now in the light? When? He said, but now you are light in who? In the Lord. He says, walk then as children of light. Let's rise up. Sometimes you are in the dark. But he says, but now you are in the light. And that light is from the Lord. And so you are in the Lord. And so you cannot afford to walk in darkness again. He says, walk as who? As children of the light. Before we pray. Let me say this, and I said it earlier, only Jesus can give light. Amen. And so, if you have not given your life to Christ, then you don't have the light of God in you. Amen. But if you have given your life to Christ, then what you need to do is to reject any form of darkness around you. Now, darkness may be in different form. For some people, they may not be in darkness. But do you know that they can tolerate darkness around them? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's okay. You see, the moment you are tolerating darkness around you, invariably, you are saying that darkness is okay to continue. But God, when God, what God saw in the beginning was darkness. And he says, no, it is not good. Let there be light. So you are going to pray. If you have not given your life to Christ, your own prayer will be that Lord Jesus come into my life. Save me and let your light shine. But if you have given your life to Christ, now it's time for you to pray. A focus, it says, arise, shine. Why? Because your light has come. The light of the Lord is upon you. And so what is causing you not to rise and to shine? What is blocking the light of God from shining in you? Are you still walking in darkness? The Bible says you must walk as children of light. Are you still found with the works of darkness? As long as I am in the world. Jesus says as long as I am in the world. You are representing him. And so as long as you are in the world. You are his representative. You are the light of the world. Talk to the Lord. My light must shine. I cannot afford, I cannot allow my light to be quenched, to become dark, to die. The Bible says your light is upon me. It is your light that is shining in me, through me, by me, to others. Help me. That I may walk in the light continuously. That I will not depart from your way, from your way, from your counsel, from your purpose. Help me to arise and shine. Every works of darkness, I reject them. Around me, around my home, around my children, I reject them. I release light. In the beginning was the world. The world was with God. The world was God. The same was in the beginning. All things were made by him. And there was nothing that was made that was not made by him. In him was life. And the life is the light of man. You have the life of Christ in you. And so you have the light of God. And for someone, it's your life being troubled. It's your destiny being troubled by darkness. I want you to release light. And say in the name of Jesus. Let there be light. Oh to every form of darkness. Pervading my life. Pervading my home. I decree light. For me to rise and to shine. I cannot afford to tolerate darkness around me. Let there be light. In the life of my children. In my career. Let there be light. In my health, let there be light. In my going out and my coming in, let there be light. All around me, wherever I go, wherever I step into, let there be light. I am a burning and shining light. I cannot afford to walk in darkness. Help me. 
Arise. It's time for you to shine. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we want to give you praise. We want to give you glory for your word this morning. You send your word to Israel and that word has lighting upon Jacob. I pray for every heart. Listening and watching and saying, Lord Jesus, I want to have the light of life. I'm asking, Lord, that you will come into their life and you will save them in the name of Jesus. You will not only save them, Lord, but yes, your light will continue to burn in their life, in their heart, in the name of Jesus. And for as many of us who have already given our life to you, we are your children. We cannot afford to fail you. And so, Father, we are asking, help us, oh, to continue to walk in light. Help us to continue to walk in light, that we will not walk in darkness. In the name of Jesus, you have released the commandment unto us to arise and to shine. I'm praying, Lord, for every of my era. In the name of Jesus, as many, Lord, that will hear that commandment and will follow. Lord, let them begin to shine. As they arise, Lord, you will cause them to begin to shine. Your shining will be evident. Your shining will be visible. Yes, in the name of Jesus, in your health, you will shine. In your finances, you will shine. In your career, you will shine. In your academics, in your studies, you will shine. In the midst of this crooked and perverse generation, you will shine. To the glory of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we are praying. And amen. Church, let's celebrate the Lord as you take your seats. Celebrate, celebrate the Lord. He is your light. Celebrate him.